Hey, hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video from Buried One. In today's video, I'm going to talk about blockchains in space and how this will actually work or if it won't work. Because it's very important for us, we are the kind of people that need to put on this revolution because we are almost reaching 2020 and I want to do some space mining in 2040. Uh, I'm gonna explain that later on too, but first of all, how can we get blockchains into space? It's fairly simple, we need internet in space. There is one big company working on this called SpaceX. You'll probably already know this guy, Elon Musk, and he had an idea to beam down Wi-Fi to the Earth planet, so we all have Wi-Fi. So he's going to release thousands of satellites around the earth that are about 340 kilometers away and they are circling the earth all over the place and covering us with wi-fi all day so you could even have wi-fi in the jungle so this starlink is going to be the first internet in space so if we use an equation on how to calculate the internet speed latency that's going to be very important. So the latency, how long it takes for the internet to reach the satellite and reach you back. So for example, I have a phone and I'm going to send a message through Facebook to one of my friends on the other side of the planet. It would take about 30 milliseconds to reach my friend with the Starlink network because there is always a problem uh, that's with the TCP and IP. Uh, it's just a problem that we can't solve that's just how the internet was made. Okay, so it's fairly simple to calculate the internet latency in space. This is like very, very theoretical in practice. It could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less. There's only one way to find out and that is to start doing what I'm gonna show you today. So first of all, internet latency in space for geosynchronous orbits. They are about 35,000 kilometers away from Earth. That is where you normally put your satellites and stuff. But the latency is 233 milliseconds. Or if you guys know, if you're playing Call of Duty and you have 233 milliseconds latency, oh damn, that one is pretty bad. We all know what happens then. But let's take this one step further. Uh, let's say SpaceX got a moon base and they start mining helium-3 for fusion reactors on the moon we have a latency of about 2.5 seconds because the moon's distance is about 384,000 kilometers away that is fairly okay latency of 2.5 seconds uh, that's going to be pretty easy for the blockchain to synchronize on the ledgers no problem at all if we take it further to venus for example it will take about 4 to 29 minutes because we're talking about millions of kilometers away from from Earth and also their orbit around the Sun makes it very difficult to reach this planet because it has a minimum distance and also a maximum distance because we are not actually it's not spinning around the Earth like the moon does so it is not a fixed distance so the latency is between the 4 and 29 minutes it's the same for Mars the distance is also variable and the latency is between 6 and up to 44 minutes. Mercury, the distance is also variable and the latency is between 8 to 25 minutes. And as I said in the beginning of the video, China wants to start doing some space rock mining by 2040. Uh, what does this mean? The asteroid belt distance is, for example, about 300 to up to 400 million kilometers away from Earth and the latency to the asteroid's belt will be about 36 to 53 minutes. This is all very reasonable. This is not a problem at all. So for example, someone is mining on the China space mining program in the asteroid belt with his spaceship and he turns in a massive chunk of gold and he wants to be paid in Ethereum or Bitcoin. Well, for Bitcoin, you would have a transaction that would take about five blocks to synchronize. And there is a way that 
blockchains can do some unconfirmed payments. There is also a website that shows you the current unconfirmed transactions and they will be updated later on. So for example, you send the transaction of about 1000 Ethereum to the guy that just mined a golden space rock. 50 minutes later, it will be added onto the unconfirmed transactions and the blockchain will automatically validate it and still confirm the payment. It will take 50 minutes longer for the blockchain to confirm the actual transaction. So it will be 50 minutes plus 10 minutes to confirm, for example, or 50 minutes plus 30 minutes to confirm if the block time is a little bit lower. So it's so simple to introduce blockchains into space. But of course, there are many factors that also affect this because there is time dilation. I'm not even sure if I, I spell this right. There is so many factors that we need to think about. But blockchains in space is fairly possible unless we take it a step further. So if we if we go to the other solar system, like the nearest ones, that's four light years away and the Wi-Fi can't go faster than the speed of light. So it will take four years for the transaction to be done with potential extraterrestrials or something on a different solar system. So it will take four years to complete this transaction. Four years and ten minutes to be exact. So how will we fix this? That is a potential thing I was thinking about. Unless we can we can take Wi-Fi and put it through a fourth dimension and transfer it to the different solar systems or something with quantum computers. I'm taking it really far, I know. It's a it's a big thing to think about, but we need to we need to think out of the box because are we seriously gonna stay on one planet? How boring is that? I, I just wanna go to Mars and and the moon and stuff like that. That's gonna be interesting. So hopefully you all enjoyed this video. And see you guys in the next one.